actual weird inexplicable things that have happened to you. Like real stuff to you guys come on. Went hiking once. Alone, heard a growl about 400 feet away, was oddly drawn to it, pulled myself away from it and ran back to my car. I never thought much of it, but then I heard some passengers in my Uber, I drive Uber for side cash, and they were talking about some podcast that they heard where a few marathon runners were going for a run alongside some mountain, when one of them decided to run ahead of them, and when they caught up to him he was nude, and walking towards a tree, with his clothes neatly folded on top of a rock. His friends were able to yell at him, which apparently got him out of his trance, and after he clothed back up and they all got out of there, he said that the last thing he remembers before entering that trance, was the sound of a growl nearby that felt comforting. That scared the crap out of me, and I asked them what podcast it was, but then we got to their destination and they just hopped out, damn. Well I saw two UFOs recently I guess. It wasn't super amazing they were just lights, but it was enough, if you know what I mean. I just looked up and thought there was a star, but it did a sort of spiral pattern and moved behind a cloud. And about 0.1 seconds after that a second one flew behind the same cloud making an upward curve. I suppose the path of the second would could be explained as a shooting star. But not the first. And they couldn't have been fireflies, because they went behind a cloud so it was far away. I think the pattern, and how fast they must have been going, also rules out drones. It was nice to finally see something like that in real life instead of on shitty low res videos where you can't tell if it's just a reflection in a window or something. I think the government is refusing to arrest me for some reason. I get pulled over for speeding with expired registration license. Verbal warning. Get drunk and pass out outside, get woken up suddenly by cops, punch a cop in surprised stupor, and then get beaten up by cops? Car towed by some towing company, taken to hospital for detox, no record of any event occurring that night. Get caught with weed? No ticket, just throw it out please. Get pulled over drunk driving? Initial suspicion, but he doesn't smell alcohol, and all of a sudden, I doesn't seem drunk anymore. Have a nice day sir. Don't say any white privilege bullshit because I am a swarthy white and visibly low class so it ain't that. I almost got drugged with date rape drugs by a gay cop one time but I got away and didn't make a big stink about it so I think that might have something to do with it. I have also sold weed to a few firemen before so that might also contribute but I just don't know, none of that seems like enough to put me on any kind of special list. Why the special treatment? I don't do anything these days but go to the gym and read so I don't get how my freedom contributes to anything they might have going on. It's always initial suspicion. They go to their car for a few minutes, come back, and then tell me to split. Sure, tons of things. Here's two. The first one are vivid memories of being in the backseat of the family car with my sister. I was around six. Because my sister was still in a car seat, and she is a couple of years younger than me. My dad would often drive to the auto shop and leave us in the car while he went in. Every time this happened I'd fall asleep but wake up when the car started except there was no one in the front seat. It was like the car was driving itself and I would be overcome with this weird primal fear. This would happen so often I started to get anxious and scared about getting in the car. It finally stopped when I decided that I was gonna look in the front seat while this was happening. I looked and it was exactly what I thought it was. The steering wheel and pedals were being turned and pushed but no one was there, like an invisible person. I remember pretending to fall back asleep and then passing out because this was so scary to me. I'm still not sure if this was a series of dreams, it felt so real and like I said happened a lot. Maybe a weird trauma thing where I blocked out the person? My dad never seemed to notice that we would be gone. The second story is the only time I saw a shadow person. My sister would see them all the time but I never saw them like she did. It was monsoon season, Tucson, Arizona so it was thundering pretty bad. I think I was around 11, still pretty scared of the noise. Late at night, maybe midnight or 1 in the morning. A huge thunder crack went off and I jumped out of bed and ran downstairs to jump in my mom's bed. I saw my sister run down there but she looked funny, I saw just her upper body, all shadow, like seeing a physical person in the dark. 
and it looked like she was levitating running really fast down the stairs. Like if you stopped a movie frame of someone running and just moved the person stuck mid pose, I figured the light was being weird from the lightning and jumped in bed with my mom. Then about 5 minutes later my sister jumps in bed with is. WTF? I'm not sure exactly how old I was when this happened, but it would be between 3 and 7 years old. I remember being in the garage with my dad near me on the driveway. I think I was pacing around waiting for my dad to do something. While this was happening, I pictured these colorful balls in my mind, some getting smaller, and others getting bigger, all randomly arranged in a black void. And when I say pictured, I don't mean that this was on purpose, it was like my brain was being forced to imagine it. At the same time, I heard these whispers in my mind. There were multiple voices and they weren't saying anything understandable but they were human voices. It was like an attack on my senses. I tried clearing my mind of these, but that would not work. I'm not sure how long it lasted for, but while it was happening I was worried, even though, at the time, I never told anyone about it. I asked about it on Reddit. Someone said that it could have been some sort of gas poisoning, given that I was in a garage. Once had supposed members of the O9A try and hex me. Be me. Piss off Wignat FGT online. He and his friends get together and claim they will curse me and dox me and my family. Later that evening I feel my room get cold. Feels like someone is watching me. I say a quick prayer then go to sleep. Have a dream about a group of men following me around in the street. They're regular white dudes, probably in their 20s, and they all look emo for some reason. They keep following me, and at one point they surround me. No one touches me but I feel a sensation in my lower region. A sort of spiritual sodomy if you will. I feel this energy and manage to break free. Get the idea to start praying in Latin as I read somewhere that doing so pisses off the devil. Dudes immediately start seething and frothing, however they back off and maintain a distance. Go into a hotel for refuge, the guys follow me inside the building. A priestess walks up to me, black woman, and suggests I stop praying in Latin. I ignore here and find a room. The other guys are just outside the door but they do not enter. I wake up from the dream. Funniest detail is that all those FGTs got perma banned a week later, and their server got nuked. Saw a man walking down the street turn into a woman before my eyes. It was the middle of the night nobody else was on the street. Man was walking, looked away for a second to respond to my friend, looked back, woman replaces man exactly where he was walking. It was so weird my friend saw it too. 16 years old got permission to go to a friend's cabin for a week for hunting and fishing it's just three 15 year old kids and no parents we are all drinking and making noise the whole day we make noise and have fun at night we start telling each other horror stories preferably real ones owner of the cabin liked to tell shitty stories and my other friend who was more serious liked to listen after we are all really drunk about to pass out serious friend looks at us with his usual serious look. He asks us, if I tell you a real ghost story that happened to me and my grandma will you believe me? We both nod obviously the serious friend never tells us bullshit. He starts talking about this lady in the woods who is all dressed in white and has a shining white dress. We both get shivers because it all sounds like it could have happened. We pass out a bit later and nothing really happened until next summer when we did the same trip again. I'm almost blackout drunk this time there is more people with us at the cabin. I'm pissing at the wood line and it's pitch black. I start thinking about the woman in white for some reason. I get scared and start scanning the wood line. I freeze. I can literally see the white woman just standing about 30 meters from me. I can't make out a face just the white shining dress. I just stare at her afraid to move or look away. She stays there for a good 4 seconds and vanishes when I blink or look away for a bit. I tell my serious friend about this and he gets mad and doesn't believe me. He quickly brushes it off, says never talk about her again and continues drinking. 
I never saw her again and never talked about it. Mind you this happened around 2009 or so. I remember I was playing some game on my Nintendo DS, INB for Zoomer, and eventually I got bored of it, so I decided to switch the current cartridge for another one. The cartridge that was now ejected uncautiously fell behind the couch I was sitting on. I tried to look behind the couch, around the floor and even inside the couch itself. I never found that game again. Even when I moved in 2014, and once again in 2019, that cartridge never came out. To this very day that game is considered as lost and gone for good. Weirdly enough I also didn't hear any noise when the game card fell 13 years ago. The hell happened? Satan wanted to go at new Super Mario Brothers. That exact same thing happened to me with a Luftwaffe watch, my grandfather gave me, that I put into my safe and then months later when I went to go get it so I could show it to a friend, it wasn't there. Cash, jewelry, other collectible watches including a Rolex worth over E thousand dollars were still there, but the Luftwaffe watch was gone. It rattles my brain to this day because no one else knew the combination to that safe and it was actually a safe inside of another safe. I've told that story to a few other people and some have claimed that the same thing has happened to them with period coins and other Third Reich memorabilia, including pictures. Be me. Decade or two ago at this point. Living alone in old apartment. Had some generic Akai VCR. Watching Simpsons recordings. Knock the remote off the couch arm. I hear it clatter on the floor but I look down and it's not there. I look under the couch, nope, she ain't here neither. Physically rearrange furniture to find it, this was a big open room with like, a couch, a TV table and the TV plus VCR. Itself, was poor as shit back then. Didn't have much. TV remote is gone for good, guess I'll go down to Kmart and pick up one of those shitty overpriced, universal remotes and hope it works. Fast forward to about a year or so ago. Covid keeping me home from work, so I decide to clean the house up a bit. Find box of old clothes I never bothered to sort for the thrift store. Sort through them. Something's in the pocket of a pair of jeans. It was an Akai brand VCR remote. I've worn those jeans at least once a week since 2005. I'd have known if there was a chunky piece of plastic in the pocket. Cannot explain it to this day. Did my remote fall through some kind of mini-time warp directly 15 years into the future? LOL. Things that fall behind furniture are absolutely not subject to any law of reality. I've had a playing card fall behind something before, a dresser irk, and it was a completely different card when I got it back. And the content in the card that fell was expunged from existence. I've had a similar experience. Eight years ago, on the couch took out my cartridge and put in another game. Had the game next to me. Can't remember anything after that. Four years ago. Remember the game. Can't find it. Look inside and out the couch for the game. F me. Convinced myself that I left it somewhere in my closet. Forgot about it. Be me four months ago. Walking around my backyard. 12 inches, 30 centimeters of snow covers the yard. It's friggin there. Lying on the ground next to the wall of my house, where the couch is. Pickrel is the game, I took off the game title while I was trying to clean it off. Obviously 8 years of weather kind of damaged the game so it's no good. Never had weird stuff like this happen before. Stuff mostly from early childhood may have been overactive imagination but I doubt it. Maybe just dreams and coincidence. Don't think I've posted about it before. 1. Playing around in my room, on my own, other people are there, just in different parts of my home. Looking at the window, it's middle of a sunny day. Suddenly, the brightness intensifies, at the same time everything gets rather quiet. I see a bright humanoid figure, I don't recall details but it seemed feminine, it's talking to me but now for the life of me I cannot recall what it was saying, it's possible I simply couldn't understand and so didn't memorize. 
I turn away and I think it wanted me to stay and listen more but I just walked to the door and when I looked back I've seen nothing. No, there was no fear, it was as if such considerations would be turned off. 2. Had a grandma I visited a couple of times. She was already rather old and frail, not really leaving her room, taken are of my by aunt, uncle and their kids. Once when I was with her there, I must have fallen asleep. But what I remember from a dream was her bringing me to some calm place outside. Seemed like she wanted to present me to some old, stern, but somehow also healthy, full of vigor, straight posture guy. He was asking me some questions and telling me things but again, I couldn't answer or understand. I think that made my grandma disappointed. I woke up, or at least I recall being back in her room. She looked at me sadly and told me to leave her for a bit on her own. I end before you failed at some mystical thing. Maybe. No idea. Yeah, the memory's spotty but it was early childhood, decades ago, and my memory's kinda autism level in general. Broad but not deep. I remember some things many people struggle with, events from infancy I had confirmed but which at that age I shouldn't be able to remember. I know the moment when one falls asleep and wakes up and how it feels. Got some other minor events, too. When I was a teenager I lived in backwoods Appalachian Mountains. I've seen and heard enough there to be convinced there is plenty beyond our grasp. Heard voices, that were very close by, by the river at night when nobody was around. One time in an old abandoned barn I found a black bird, crow probably, that was freshly squashed to death. It looked like it had been pancaked, it was in the middle of the dirt floor of that barn and the blood and moisture was still fresh. There were no working roads leading to that barn, the only road was obscured by fallen trees, rocks, and you had to walk miles to get to this place, there were no other signs of anything, I still haven't find a comfortable explanation, even a paranormal one. I have a reoccurring series of dreams that started shortly after high school where I'm in a fictional setting back in my high school days, and I have a girlfriend named Lisa, who I never had in high school, I didn't even know a Lisa. In these dreams at first she's asking me for a pink Corvette, which I promise I'm going to get her one day, when I have enough money. Years go by and every once in a while I'll have a dream with Lisa in it, and she doesn't always bring up the Corvette. Sometimes I do and she gets really happy when I tell her it'll be any day now. This has been going on for the past 20 years on almost a weekly basis. Well a few years back I found a PDF of my old high school senior yearbook online and I was sifting through the pages when to my absolute horror I see the girl from my dreams in the freshman section, and her name was, is, Lisa Martinez. I was a loner in high school. I have never met this girl. And the way my high school was organized, upperclassmen weren't allowed to hang out with underclassmen, they couldn't have classes together and they couldn't fraternize during or after school. It was a very strict old-fashioned school. Even the layout of the school was zoned so every age group and gender could only hang out in those designated areas, and it was very strictly enforced. Like there was no way I could have met this girl even in passing. I have tried everything everything to find her on social media, but I've never even gotten close. I've even spent days looking up every single person from that high school on Facebook slash Instagram and then try and see if she's in their friends list or comments, and I never find anything. This is her, the only picture I have, and keep in mind that I have only had this picture for about 4 years but have been having consistent dreams about her for the past 20 years with 16 of them being before I even found this picture. Yeah and I know it sounds like creepypasta, but I swear to you all that it's real, and hell it, maybe it's a really really strange coincidence, but the fact that I wasn't actively searching for her and until I saw her picture I simply believed those dreams and her herself were just some odd quirk dream I was having based on nothing in particular makes this the greatest blunder of my life. I think about it all the time and every day. Whenever I have dreams with her in it, they are vivid to BTW, like real life, I'm frozen for the rest of that day. And in the yearbook I saw her picture first, which scared me enough, but it wasn't until I saw that her frigging name was Elizabeth that I felt a fear I've never felt in my entire life. 
I'm completely alone in this shit too because I tell people and they don't get it. There's no rational explanation for this. WTF is going on? Oh yeah and one other thing that stands out in my dreams is that every once in a while she'll show me a picture of the car she wants, and throughout the years the models change and even her source materials modernize. Like in the beginning they were magazine cutouts, and then computers, and finally it's either her phone or a tablet. I know nothing about cars and just based on those dreams I can google it and find precisely the car she's showing me in her dreams. I was once within 30 yards of a lightning strike, it hit a lamppost near me. Fairly loud crack, nothing terrifying, about as loud as a shotgun being fired 10 feet away. No particularly bright flash, but it was the middle of the day, one of those sudden summer thunderstorms. Not at all like you described, but this was just vanilla, common or garden fork lightning, I know there's a lot of weird other types but I know little about them. Might have been one of those you saw. As for explosions being silent when you're close, can confirm. Be me, mechanic ing at work. Fire up oxy acetylene torch to attack seized bolt. Torch goes out. Think gas is running low, approach bottles to check regulators. Everything goes orange for a split second. Eyes hurt immediately. Weird loud deep pitched wah woo type noise from other side of workshop. Sounded like someone flexing a sheet of metal only deeper and louder. Face starts hurting. Become aware of loud hissing noise. Acetylene hose isn't there anymore. Turns out our acetylene hose had pinholes, allowing air into it. The torch didn't go out, the flame front just retreated back down the hose, and all the gas in the 25 meter hose exploded in my face. Everyone else in the building heard an almighty boom but all I heard was the echo of it coming back, never heard the kaboom. In grandma's basement, living there in between move. Probably around 14. Playing in the basement like an autist. Basement is uncanny as hell. Made to look like it's not a basement but gives off backrooms vibes. Mom's bedroom door is slightly open and get a sudden feeling of dread looking at it. It's pitch black inside and I go to close it. As I almost pull it closed a hand emerges from the darkness. Grabs the side of the door above the handle. Can feel the physical restraint of it. Back away in shock and friggin book it upstairs. Scariest shit that ever happened to me. I'm actually typing this from my grandmother's computer while I'm visiting on Mother's Day. Basement is still spooky. Several weeks ago, get home from work. Live with family, pull into garage around 11.40 pm on a Saturday night. Mom does laundry in morning, so I bring down my dirty basket. Walking into the laundry room, it's dead silent. All of the sudden, hear the resounding gong of a singing bowl being struck. No one owns one in my house. I was on the opposite side where everyone was. Everyone but me and my dog were asleep. It was right next to my ear. Not sure what to make of it, wasn't scared. Few weeks later. Sleeping late, nobody's home, dog has to go outside to piss. Bring her down from the second floor. Take her outside. She comes back in. I go back upstairs and try to fall back asleep. All of the sudden, dog acts like someone is coming home. She rushes downstairs and barks a lot. Hear a woman say my dog's name in a calming way. Dog stops barking. Thought it was my mom, but I wasn't sure, still went to sleep. Woke up, called my mom. She was at work all day. Nobody else was home when I heard that. Last night. Pulling into garage from work. Notice shed has lights on inside and the door is wide open. Think someone is stealing shit. Close the gate so they can't escape. Approach my with my pistol. Nobody's inside or around the shed. I do not want to enter the shed. I close the door, lights turn off by themselves for some reason. Feel weird. Go back inside, experience nothing out of the ordinary for the rest of the night. Just a couple of weird things that were recent. Used to have more weird shit all the time. Walking through a park. Stop. Feel sudden sense of intense dread. Unable to move out of fear. Seconds pass. 
a tree falls where I would have been if I had kept walking. Saved my life so I'm not complaining. Call to live in Hawaii. Meet more friendly people than ever before at first. Pray for a mutually beneficial work trade one day. Meet and get invited to live with a popular musician that night. Offers a place to live and some money in exchange for help building a temple. Work for a while, while meeting some strange characters along the way at various party scenes. It's almost a dream come true. Eventually get around to asking to be paid for my hours worked. Suddenly changes his tune, pretends like we never agreed to that. I remind him of our agreement, he acknowledges it, then argues that I don't deserve payment after building an entire foundation because he let me camp. I decide to cut my loses and walk away from this swindling clown. Not long after, while driving to the beach, pick up a hitchhiking crone. We exchange stories. When I name the guy that robbed me, she gasps. I knew him since back in the day. He's part of the gang that assaulted and murdered all three of my daughters. She tells me in detail how they operate, that all the big destinations are fronts for traffickers. I am floored, all the weird interactions I'd witnessed before just clicked, it all made sense now why these people and scenes had such unnatural, creepy vibes. They've tried to kill me many times for warning others, but I persist. She directs me to a secret wild avocado grove. We gather three bagfuls, then I take her home. It's a hovel not far from one of these wicked compounds. While dropping her off, one of their stooges drives up to question me, completely stonewalls her like she's a ghost after being greeted, then speeds off. He's the one that's tried to run me over, they're all sick. I've heard screams of bloody murder coming from over there late at night. Decide I have to investigate this place in the morning. The grounds are beautiful and expansive. They're hosting a potluck this day and invited all their neighbors. Host concludes meal with an unprompted apology to everyone for any unspecified loud noises or disturbances late at night and that we're committed to making sure these problems do not happen again in the future. No one seems to have anything to add to this in a room of nearly 20. Having seen and heard enough, I decided it was time to leave this place while I still could go back to the musician's place to pick up some items I'd stored. He's around, I tell him why I've come. Seemingly without any context, he goes I'm glad you trust me enough to have come here, you must believe I'm not crazy or dangerous. Smile and nod with a mutual death stare. On my way out, an owl, symbol of protection, swoops over me. Pack up and say good riddance to this accursed isle. Escaped with my life, and so the story continues. Definitely divine timing at work, no doubt about it. Was dating a chick in SF while I lived in WA, about a decade and a half ago. She books a hotel room for me to stay in while visiting there. Coolfreehotel.png Go to sleep alone the first night. Wake up halfway through night. Glowing ghost with rotting body and blue aura, Sunken black voids for eyes that seem to be infinitely deep holes. Staring still. So fucking spooked I pass back out. Tell GF about it next day. She starts laughing hysterically and goes, Huh, I guess it's real. What dot MFW? Says the hotel is supposedly the most haunted in the world. She booked the haunted room for me. Explains why everyone was looking at me like I was nuts and reassuring me I could change rooms at any time if I needed. Just call for help if you need us.wmv. No phones in room or at desk. Anon, I'll get you a different room if you want, thanks for helping me do a blind test on that. Screw that Latino bitch.jpg. Stay there another week and a half, nothing else happened. Many years ago, when I was a kid, I rode my bike through the woods on a nice summer night. These woods had a long trail that connected a few subdivisions. I had to get back home from a friend's house, so I took this shortcut, as I was already out past curfew. During the day, this area had a lot of foot traffic. Many people walked their dogs, kids played airsoft, others built jumps for their bikes. But this was around 12.30 am. I was the only one in the area, as far as I could tell. It was dark, 
although there was a full moon, visibility was good enough to not need a flashlight when on the main trail. I was frantically pedaling, and approached a clearing in the woods. Right at the clearing of the woods there is a large pond. As I was riding my bike, directly to my side I saw a white figure, maybe 20 feet away. It was a lady in a long white gown. I stopped. I could only see the side of her figure. This woman, standing alone, seemingly unaware of my approach, caught my attention. She was right at the edge of the water, standing perfectly still. It was quiet, just the faint sound of crickets chirping and frogs. It looked as if she was looking down at the pond. Like she was trying to see her reflection. She had very long hair that fell past her shoulders. The gown was clean, which was surprising because of how muddy it got near the water. I wanted to say something, but my inner voice said don't. And I thought it was best to not let her know of my presence. So I stood there observing, gripping my handlebars out of anxiousness, ready to book it at any moment. A minute went by and she had not moved a bit. This made me feel very uneasy, since most people would have heard my approach and acknowledged it with a glance. This has become an almost daily occurrence. Strap in because this will be a long post. One night I've had a weird and esoteric dream. The premise was simple. This life is a simulation, keep reading, a eugenics program for the soul, either intentionally or unintentionally. This false reality is probably the demiurge's work and everything that happens in it is designed to keep your soul locked in. You will reincarnate for as long as you have to. Once your soul either breaks free, not through death, will you be placed in your true plane of existence, might be non-physical. That's why you don't see many truly good people in the world, their souls are freed completely upon death and they do not reincarnate. I wanted to test this dream and the way I do it is I get into a focused state of mind where I'm physically present and running on autopilot, but my mind is in a sort of state which I can't fully put into words yet. I'm not daydreaming or even thinking about things pertaining to our physical reality even remotely. As if my mind is only thinking in and about metaphysical concepts and architecture. Almost the exact minute I make a conscious effort to place my mind into this state, weird things begin to happen. Random people begin to stare at me or try to interact with me. Usually it's attractive women. The way I interpret this is just the simulation trying to contain me within itself. This happens so consistently and always under the same mental state that it's hard to ignore. Usually when I'm mentally present and when my mind is preoccupied with this reality and trivial matters, none of this stuff happens. I've taken into consideration every single thing I could that would influence my environment and the way it responds to me. My physical appearance, body language, body odor, the way I'm dressed and where I look. This couldn't have been subconscious physical movement that people might pick up on. It always happens when my mind completely separates from the physical environment. I once saw a cigar-shaped UFO just floating above my town in broad daylight, and by above I mean way up in the sky like where you would see a jet, and the thing looked huge. I'm 100% certain it was not a helicopter or a plane. You could tell it wasn't a heli because of the shape and it was just floating there. I was on my way somewhere so I was kind of just watching it as I walked and it was just slowly floating through the sky. I passed some dude on the sidewalk who probably saw me looking at the sky and wondered what I was looking at. I'm not sure if he noticed it or not or thought it was weird. I didn't want to look like a weirdo so I pretended not to care about the thing in the sky and just passed him and kept walking until I got to an area where I couldn't see it anymore. It was definitely weird as hell, and definitely the most clearly I've ever seen a UFO because it was the only one I'd ever seen during the day. It was kind of unsettling. Pick related is basically what it looked like. This happened to me once. B14-ish. Walking home from school in lightning storm. Light rain, absolutely no warning of any storm or anything. Next thing I know everything is blindingly white. I'm on the ground, everything is silent. Vision fades back slowly out of the whiteness. Tree is exploding in what looks like slow motion. Branches and bark flying everywhere, genuinely looked like shit you'd see in a movie. Realize I was about 30 meters away from getting fried like a hot dog in a lightning storm. Snap back into reality. 
run home because my dumb ass figured lightning wouldn't be able to catch me if I was running. The tree grew back, but for a while it had an insane looking burn right through the middle of it. Be me. Wake up. Missed work by hours, alarm clock never went off. Run around panicking. Remember I double checked my alarm the night before. Wake up from dream. Stare at the ceiling, thinking, well that was weird. Alarm clock goes off. Here's my shitty short but true story I'll contribute. About 7 or 8 years old. Around 9-11 era. At school. Go out into the playground for lunch break. Get to the middle of the playground. Just casually glance up into the sky. See three gray slash white discs flying in formation, one in front of the other two. Look around to find someone to point it out to. Everyone's frozen. All the kids in the playground are frozen in time. But the discs keep moving slowly across the sky. Nope.jpg Realize it's not an overactive imagination, these frigging UFOs are actually flying above the playground and all the kids and everything around me is frozen in time. By the time I had this thought, the three discs which I still had my eyes on had slowly made their way across the sky. Look around again. Everything's back to normal, kids playing, noise, everything. Try to explain it to people and no one believes me. Don't tell anyone this anymore so people don't think I'm insane. Be me. Driving through my hometown. Listening to music. Use an FM modulator plugged into my 12V outlet to get tunes to my stereo. I always use this frequency 88.1 because no radio stations use it in my town. BZT static on my radio and my music cuts out. Turn off the FM modulator for now since it's not working, and it can be difficult to change the channel while driving. A radio station came on and it's playing an ad for Burger King. Then 20 seconds later I drive past a Burger King. Then another 20 seconds the radio station is gone. Driving to work one night, I worked third shift, down a rural highway with little traffic, I came across a big pulsating light hovering over the trees closest to the road. There were two other hovering lights over the trees in the distance that were on the same plane as the one near the highway. The pulsating orb was completely silent and pulsed slowly. I wanted to pull over and get my phone out, but I didn't because I wasn't sure my phone would get a good picture slash video because of how bright the light was. I also didn't want to be late for work and there wasn't anywhere to pull over effectively because the highway was very narrow. This all happened back in 2019. Be me. Living in Nova for work. Drive to a local park to smoke a cigar. Park is empty, and spot is secluded. Take a piss behind perfect pissing tree. Smoke cigar and talk to my dad on the phone. Five to ten minutes go by. Random stranger, seeming to be 50 to 60 years old man approaches me from seemingly nowhere. Says, I just ran five miles. I just reply, that's cool. He walks in the direction I took a piss. Think nothing of it. Another 10 minutes go by. Midway through my cigar now. Out of the corner of my eye I spot the stranger staring at me, standing halfway being the piss tree in some sort of idle stance. Obviously feeling threatened at this point I gather my things and begin to head to my car, all the while keeping on topic with my dad's conversation, as not to cause alarm. Reach my car and check the general direction of where I came from to ensure he isn't following me. Begin to reverse. MFW he's in my frigging rear view now, just standing there. Switch that bitch into drive and haul ass out of there. Realize I kept my cigar lit the entire time. Called my brother shortly after the event occurred and he was quick to inform me that the smoke might have saved my life. Been a few years since I've posted mine. First one. Be me. 2010 at the time. Metalhead in a major metropolitan area. Live in outlying suburb developing through old farmland. Parents out of town. Go to concert with Metalhead buddy. Long drive has us a few miles from my place around 2 a.m. post-concert. 
driving along in 90 shitbox, blaring death metal, jamming out. Road we're on cuts through fields, zero streetlights, black abyss surrounding us except where shitty halogen. Bulbs illuminate. Suddenly, car goes dead. Literally nothing works, just dead. Panic, but manage to come to a stop without killing ourselves. Hop out, pop hood, using shitty potato phone to try to see what I'm doing. Buddy goes to back of the car to try to call for help with his phone. As I'm looking under the hood, I can hear him at the back of the car. Fiddling with shit, suddenly Buddy asks what's going on from right beside me. I explain that I'm retarded and don't know. Buddy then asks, from the back of the car, who the hell I'm talking to. Look up, and see silhouette beside me. Look at back of car and can clearly see Buddy standing back there, presumably looking at me flip out and sprint into field screaming. After a while, we regroup at the car, jump in, lock the doors, and desperately fumble with keys trying to start it. Car starts with no problem. Speed home in silence. To this day, Buddy denies it ever happened. Second one. 2011. Still me. Have developed a love of urban exploration. Decide I want to try to find actual haunted locations. After a few weeks, get a lead on an abandoned mental health facility. Con some friends into joining me to check it out. Get some gear together and head out to middle of nowhere. Have to do some minor off-roading to get around a gate, but eventually roll up on building. Brutalist, concrete structure that's completely overgrown and covered in graffiti. Make jokes and try to unnerve friends. Grab gear and start toward the entrance. Opening is busted open, but presumably used to be double doors with shatterproof glass surrounds. Have high power flashlight for these outings. Turn it on and shine it into the foyer can see a receptionist desk sitting inside and hallways branching off. Leaves and shit all over the floor. No graffiti on the walls. I'm walking forward as I note this stuff. As I clear the last step and reach the doorway, I freeze involuntarily. Everything inside is screaming not to keep going. Primal fear sets in like I've only ever experienced once before, in the previous story. Friends keep playing grabase as they continue past me into the building. They stop when they realize I'm not following. They start calling me a pussy because of the look on my face. Mocking me because I brought them out there. I tell them they can go in if they want, but I'm leaving. They get mad at me, but I don't hesitate. One guy had to run to the car because I put it in gear and started driving away. When I was 4 to 5 I had the most vivid dream about the original Pokemon movie. I did not know the Pokemon Mew even existed before that point and yet I had a dream about flying around with it. This dream really stuck with me and a month or so later the new Pokemon movie was released, at least in the states, about Mew and you got a free shiny Mew Pokemon card for going. There was more to this though I can't remember. It was a very mystical feeling I had when I realized my dream was a premonition but also there was a lot of ancient hieroglyphs and other such things that made it even stranger. When I was 6 to 7 I once heard the voice of a man under my bed. He told me he wanted to play and started laughing. When I heard it I was paralyzed with fear. Eventually I got over it and went jumped off the bed so he couldn't grab my feet and ran to my parents. They calmed me down. This happened two more times that very night to the point where my parents went in and looked in the closet and under the bed with a flashlight. Walking on local trail. Not really far away from the road, maybe half a mile. During the daytime. Still spooked because I'm a pussy. Out and back up a short incline, but to get there you have to take another trail, no direct access to the road. Nobody around on either. Since it's so close to the road, there's pretty much always cell reception. Get near the top of the trail. No reception. Pull out my phone. The date is now September 11th, 2001. Leave quickly. Stays that way until I manually changed it later. My brother-in-law has an odd ongoing one. Gets into car accident three years ago. Talks to my wife recently about it. A week prior to the accident he prayed in a fit of depression to trade his fitness t 
teeth, and looks for a Camaro. Accident fractures his kneecaps, knocks several teeth out, scars his face. Just enough insurance money to buy a Camaro. Now my eyebrows fairly crawled into my hair when I heard this, but that's not all he told my wife. Brother-in-law is smoking grass more recently. Has an out-of-body experience. Saw the beginning and the end of the world and knew what the purpose of life is. Here's God ask him why he was upset, he got the Camaro he asked for at the price he offered. Friggin brother-in-law has been having verbal conversations with God for like two years now, audibly hears God talk to him. Brothers-in-law life has only continued spiraling worse and worse since the accident. This fella got got by a friggin demon, bros. Posted this in the green text thread earlier, guess it might be suitable here as well. Be me, around 4 or 5 years old, so it's sometime in 1986 or so. Living in a third world country. Go to the shops one morning with mom to get some groceries. Small store in a very small, remote town. Start wandering off on my own because I'm so familiar with the store. Decide to venture further back, towards the stock room, which I usually avoid because the shelves are very tall. And it's darker than the front, I was still a tiny kid. Hear my mum telling me not to go too far. Pftway devs. Navigate through the aisles, looking at shit. Shelves seem to be getting taller the further I go in. I get to the last ales, turn round the corner and I suddenly see it. A chubby humanoid figure with a brownish pinkish hue, doing a sort of dance, looking at me. It had a head that looked like an elephant, almost like the Hindu deity Ganesh, but this creature didn't have any of the jewelry or ornaments you usually see in those pictures. It had something that looked more like a snout than a trunk. Almost as tall as the shelves, two arms and two legs, stark naked but I didn't see any genitalia. It's just there dancing and looking at me, making a strange ululating sound, not the shrieking kind but a lower, pitched version. I start freaking the hell out, naturally. Just as I was about to turn and run to find my mom, I suddenly hear a word in my head. It sounded like, Pululungulan or something like that. For some reason it occurs to me that this might be this creature's name. It just suddenly popped in my head, I didn't hear any voices. Next thing I know, my vision goes black and I open my eyes to see my bedroom. My mum comes in to wake me up, says it's almost 8 am and that I need to get ready for breakfast. Confused, I ask mom when we got back from the store. She looks at me puzzled and says we went to the store yesterday. I have no memory of returning home and going to bed the previous night. Shit lived in two rental houses, both haunted AF, rent was cheap and places were nice, so figured screw the ghosts I was living with, they can deal with it. Be me. Got new gerb and new gf and need new house close to new gerb but close enough to get regular real life cum action which was daily. Look at classified and find 1500 square meters property 4 bedroom 1 bath 1970s gig in great nick 250 a week. Move in. Don't turn the lights off to sleep for 6 months of contract. Simply can't turn lights off without impending sense of dread and danger dialed to 11. GF moves in and asks why I want turn off lights. Turn off lights and she goes oh shit turn em back on. Over next 5 years find out the next door neighbor owns the place, and knows it's haunted but says nothing to me, until I move out saying I was the longest standing tenant, so he didn't want to say nothing, but admits he reckons it's the ghost of the former owner. He also frequently hears the voice of a young girl calling to him in the backyard. Wake up many times to see shadows standing over me doors opening and closing by themselves and voices down the hallway that spoke jargon. No one ever wanted to come visit me until I left said place. That said some hippies I knew told me the house was on an energy point and a negative one at that. It apparently collected negative spirits from time to time. Phew. Glad I'm in this new house that is a bit younger, than that last one and once again the rent is real cheap, but the neighborhood is run down and slightly rough, so may. Turn off lights first night being moved in, and sense nothing compared to previous place. Great what comparison in vibe ESB, considering when I moved into the first place I didn't believe in ghosts etc. Few weeks pass, 
neighbors tell me they are glad normal people renting old place which had some rough characters live in it over last 35 years. Months pass, nothing really out of the ordinary happens, but I do notice the parking garage is super unpleasant when all lights are off but chalk it up total blackness plus past experiences. Sitting at a table one night gaming next to doorway. Out of no reason at all look up, and see image like that out of predator movies, with bent light around a 6 7 foot individual. Momentarily look back at computer because penny not dropped. WTF look up as, bent light turns away from door. Get up like lightning just enough time to see image vanish down hallway, while all the pet cats are standing frozen in hallway. Like stand in dead still mid walk frozen. Stand there dumbfounded for a moment wondering WTF just happened. All of a sudden cats go absolutely ape shit screeching and trying to climb up doors etc. Be retarded and put on best kung fu stance and snarl down hallway. Pregnant wife comes in, WTF is going on. Relate story and have to do the rounds walking about the house looking for anything but find nothing. Next 6 months go from bad to worse, with my wife seeing the same thing, sometimes as a shadow in the enclosed patio outside or down the hallway, in the living room walking through walls and shit. Seen UFO docos, where aliens drop humans like hot potatoes, if they mention God so start praying on the reg for old mate upstairs, to keep this shit at bay while wait to move out. Find out some seriously messed up shit happened in this house. Pets start freaking out regularly, and won't go in the backyard at night at all. One night gaming again as contract is closing up, and moving out to new places tired of this shit. Stand up, suddenly have urge to go into back patio room for no reason at all, creep factor is right up there and hairs on the back of my neck is going up. Go to back patio glass door, and oddly everyone follow, including my other two cats. My oldest and biggest cat dashes out of the dark at full speed, slams right into the glass door no hesitation. I swing door open and cat regains its composure, like nothing happened to him and jumps inside, shaking and pissing himself in one corner of the kitchen, while the other cats hiss at him. He is shit scared wide eyed. Go inside patio room which is spacious, and easily visible take a broom out and start swinging, hoping to collect something. Nothing happens but move the hell out anyway. Be me. 20ish. Into esoteric stuff for few years now. Four of us at friend's flat. Me, messing with a deck of cards. Zoned out. Shuffling me cards. Thinking to myself, I wanna pull all the aces out. Stroking the deck. Pull out one card face down from somewhere in the middle. Flip it. It's an ace. Reshuffle, then repeat three more times. Four aces starring back at me. Nice.jpg. Show and tell my friends what I just did. They were playing PS or something, not watching me becoming a wizard. No one believes me. Doesn't matter, I know what I did. Faith and focus Anans. Faith and focus. It's Halloween, 2014. Am watching YouTube. I'm half asleep. A video starts playing. How to put needles in candy. A literal full on tutorial. Now I know how to put needles in a Snickers. So this repeat event just happened literally 5 minutes ago. Nearly every time I enter my bathroom I see a glimpse of a shadowy figure sitting on my toilet. A figure that kinda reminds me of my now deceased grandmother. I only see it at the corner of my eye and when I take notice it's gone. I've rearranged all the things in my bathroom that could possible create a shadow in that spot, but nothing is giving me an explanation why it's there. I just saw it twice within my last trip to the bathroom, and have seen it probably 200 plus times over the past 6 months. I wanna say it's some kind of pareidolia effect, but I'm consistently seeing it under all conditions. Doesn't matter if it's day slash night or if the lights are on or not, it's almost always there when I enter. Usually when I brush my teeth or wash my hands because then the toilet is only visible in the corner of my eye. I've considered recording when I enter the bathroom. And not sure if related, but this bathroom is upstairs. A few months ago when I was downstairs alone, I heard a door handle jiggle violently from upstairs. Followed by creaking. My dog heard it and completely froze. 
I grabbed a weapon and FaceTimed my girlfriend in case I got attacked, but checked every possible spot upstairs and found no sign of anyone. I know that when the windows are open, doors tend to slam shut. But this was nothing like a slamming, now were the windows open. I have no idea what could cause a door handle to jiggle. My door handles aren't round knobs but instead like a curved shaped bar handle if that helps explain a possibility. I've been told creaks could happen from AC. So help me out. What is causing me to consistently see this shadow in my bathroom? Is it all my mind? I know for a fact the handle wasn't because my dog hurt it. So but don't know what could cause that either. This isn't that interesting but it screwed me up for a little bit. I've actually never shared it before. Be me, few years ago. Standing in my kitchen eating Triscuits out of the box. Drop one. Watch it fall. Watch it hit the ground and bounce a little. It frigging disappears in front of my face. By that I mean it literally vanished without a trace, deleted from existence. I feel around on the ground exactly where it landed, look around the whole area, it's not there have never told anyone, nobody would believe me. What do you Annans think it was? Has anything ever vanished in front of your eyes before? Of all the nights this could happen it was on Halloween in 07. It's around 9 pm. Mother sends me to go and find my sister to bring her in for the night. Walk to the top of the street and follow the houses there, calling out her name. She appears soon with her friend just a bit away from me at an alleyway slash gap between two rows of houses. I tell her she has to come in now. Her and her friend are looking up at the sky, specifically at an area just above the roof of one of the houses on the left side of the gap. Look up wondering what they're looking at. Sure enough, there is something there floating above the house. It looks like a shapeless cloud or patch of a plasma like substance thing a thick cloud of cigarette smoke billowing in the wind or writhing slowly like it was on the surface of water. It softly changes shape but still stays formless and although it has an almost cloud-like quality to it it never dissipates, grows smaller or breaks apart in any way and almost seems alive slash conscious as it floats in its spot. Quickly enough the mass slash plasma begins to float away from us behind the cover of the roof so that we can't see it. We follow along the row of houses and catch it again, floating now down a hill to the next street but still above the houses and still formless but intact. We stop at the top of the hill and watch as it floats behind a house further down the hill and then we lose sight of it. Never seen anything as strange or like that thing. It knew we saw it and oddly only started moving away once I arrived because my sister and her friend were looking at it before and it was just floating. Pick related is the spot I first saw it at except it was at night time. Drew the area it was in and the red line is the path it followed down the hill as it vanished behind the houses further down. Can only recall one possible incident and am not even sure about it. Staying in super old two-story beach house that belonged to friends of the family one summer as a kid. Middle of the day and am the only one upstairs, adults are downstairs or gone. Walk down the long hall and see a strange older woman standing in the living room. Say hello to her and she asks if, name, is here, someone I've never heard of. Tell her I don't know and that my mom and everyone else should be downstairs. Turn back to whatever I was doing and don't see her again, assume she went down or left. Later on I tell my mom about it and ask who she was. She says she never saw any woman and didn't know who I was talking about, neither did the other people who were in the house at the time still don't know who it was or if I imagined it. Be me around 2018. Need to submit an application that will literally change my life forever. One specific document takes a while to get. Get one but lose it at a friend's place like a dickhead. No way I can get the document again in time for the application deadline. Know for sure I don't have another copy at home since I checked my 10-page folder dozens of times before trying to get the document. Think, hey I'll sell my soul to whatever gets me the document. Document appears in my folder the next day. MFW. I just hope whoever gets my soul takes care of it. I don't expect any of you will believe most of the shit I've seen. Be weird lad who has a fascination with the paranormal. Weird shit happens my entire life. 
most of my baby photos have anomalies consistent with spirit photography. Strange hauntings common in my city. See things a lot, shadow creatures, lights, etc. in my home. Had a very intense dream of a man with a red skull-like face and a black suit of some kind covering him from neck to feet, who said he was here to help you understand what you see. Raised loosely Christian, several faiths at different times. Become more interested in the occult in teens. Have performed my own version of an exorcism. So on and so forth. Weird paranormal shit has just been a part of my life since I can remember. Now, the part of the story relevant to this thread. High school. Building was creepy. There had been a few fires there over the years, there had been a couple of suicides, and the building was made like a fortress by its designer. Big heavy thick walls, tall, thin windows, generally unpleasant looking place. Attended summer classes there to make up some poor grades. One of maybe 100 people in the building at the time. First floor is partially underground, so when I wander in early in the morning to find the lights off, it's dark as shit down there. Have big feet in clunky boots. Stairs have always been too shallow and small to me. I am unsurprised when my foot slips on a stair for the millionth time. I am, however, surprised when my hand misses the railing. Start to fall a good ten feet down into the darkness of the first floor. Suddenly calm as can be. Body writes itself. Instead of tumbling head over heels, I glide, feet down and legs straight like Chris Angel over the Luxor. Land safely. Look back and realize I glided not only to the base of the stairs, but somehow several feet in front of them. Physics was not a subject I did poorly in. What just happened defied physics. To this day I still can't explain it. 